Hello team, um, coming to you live from distance learning. Got my friends here and uh, we're gonna keep doing our read aloud. So we left off having just met Prince Mendenbar. Mendenbar, excuse me. He is our main character for this book, right? Which is the second book in the series that we've been reading. And Simmerine will be in it. Uh, we'll just have to see when she comes up. So, so far we've met him. He's kind of bored of being the prince, or of the king, and of having everything be proper all the time. And wants to take a day off. So he's gone. He's run into a strange princess who is looking for um, a prince or an honorable woodcutter by the by this green lake. And um, Menembar's kind of sidestepped that and didn't want to hang out with her too much. <clears throat> so. Here we go. Chapter 2. In which Mendenbar discovers a problem. Mendenbar was still congratulating himself on his escape when the trees ended abruptly. He stopped, staring, and quit worrying about the princess entirely. A piece of the enchanted forest as large as the castle lawn was missing. No, not missing. Here and there, a few dead stumps poked up out of the dry, bare ground. Something had destroyed a circular swath of trees and moss. Discover destroyed it so completely that only stumps and a few flakes of ash remained. The taste of dust on the wind brought Mendenbar out of his daze. He hesitated, then took a step forward into the area of devastation. As he passed from woods to waste, he felt a sudden absence and stumbled in shock. Where the unseen lines of power should have been humming with magical energy that was the life of the enchanted forest, he sensed nothing. The magic was gone. No wonder that princess didn't have any trouble getting into the forest, Menbar said numbly. Without magic, this section of the forest couldn't dodge away from her. All the princess had to do to get into the woods was cross it. Seriously annoyed, Mendenbar kicked at the ground, dislodging more ashes. He bent to touch one of the stumps. The wood crumbled into dust where his hand met it. Coughing, he sat back and saw something glittering on the ground beside the next stump. He went over and picked it up. It was a thin, hard disc, a little larger than his hand, and it was bright, iridescent green. A dragon scale? What's a dragon scale doing here? There was no one near him to answer his question. He inspected the scale with care, but it told him nothing more. Scowling at it, he shrugged and put it into his pocket. Then he began a methodical search of the dead area, hoping to find something that would reveal a little more. Half an hour later, he collected four more dragon scales in various shades of green and was feeling decidedly grim. He had thought he was on good terms with the dragons who lived in the east in the mountains of morning. He left them alone, and they left him alone. Glancing around the burned space, he grimaced. This doesn't look much like leaving me alone, he muttered angrily. What do those dragons think they're doing? He begun to wish he had not let them be quite so much alone for the past three years. Right now, it would be useful to know something more about dragons, and that they were other than that they were all large and breathed fire. Now, I'm wondering if this really was a dragon thing. We're going to have to keep reading to figure that out. Absently, Mendenbar pocketed the dragon scales and walked back to the edge of the burnt-out circle. It was a relief to be under the trees where he could feel the magic of the forest again. Frowning, he paused to look back at the ashy clearing. I can't leave it like this, he said to himself. If that princess came this way, anyone might get into the enchanted forest by just walking across the barren space. How do I put magic back into an area that's been sucked dry? 
suck dry of magic. What do we know that does that? Still frowning, he circled the edge of the clearing, nudging at the threads of magic that wound through the air. None of them would move any closer to the burn section, but on the far side, he found the place where a normal country outside of the forest touched the clearing. He paused. It wasn't a very wide gap. I wonder, he said softly, if I could move a little just around the edge. Carefully, he reached out and gathered a handful of magic. It felt a lot like taking hold of a handful of thin cords, except that the cords were invisible, floating in the air, and made his palms tingle when he touched them. And, of course, each cord was actually a piece of solid magic that he could use to cast a spell if he wanted. In fact, he had to concentrate hard to keep from casting a spell or two with all the magic crammed together in his hands. Pulling gently on the invisible threads, Mendenbar stepped slowly to the backward out of the enchanted forest. The brilliant green moss followed him, rippling under his feet. The trees of the forest wavered, as if he were looking at them through the shimmer of hot air rising off of sun-baked stone. He took another step, and another. The threads of magic felt warm and thin and slippery. He tightened his grip and took yet another step. The trees flickered madly, as if he were blinking very rapidly, and the moss swelled and twitched like the back of a horse trying to get rid of an unwanted rider. A drop of sweat ran down his forehead and hung on the tip of his nose. The magic in his hands felt hot and tightly stretched. He stepped back again. With a sudden wrench, everything snapped into place. The trees stopped flickering and the moss smoothed and lay still. The forest closed up around the burnt-out clearing, circling it completely and cutting it off from the outside world. Mendenbar gave a sigh of relief. It worked, he cried triumphantly. A breeze brushed past him, carrying the sharp smell of ashes, and he sobered. He hadn't repaired the damage. He'd only isolated it. Well, at least this should keep people from wandering into the enchanted forest by accident, he reminded himself. That's something. One by one, Mendenbar let go of the threads of magic as he pulled across a gap. He felt them join the other unseen strands, merging back into the normal network of magic that crisscrossed the forest. When he had released the last thread, he wiped his hands on his shirt and then wiped the sweat off his face with his sleeve. Are you quite finished? said a voice from the tree above his head. Manabar looked up and saw a fat gray squirrel sitting on the branch staring down at him in disapproval. I think so, Mendenbar said, for the time being anyway. For the time being, the squirrel said indignantly, what kind of answer is that? Not useful, that's what I call it, not useful at all. Finding my way across this forest is hard enough when people don't make bits of it jump around, not to mention burning pieces of it, and I don't know what else. I don't know what this place is coming to, I really don't. Were you here when the trees were burned? Mendenbar asked. Did you see what happened? Or did you do it? Well, of course not said the squirrel. If I had, or had seen who had, I'd have given him or her a piece of my mind, I can tell you. Really, it's too bad. I'm going to have to work out a whole new route to get home. And as for giving directions to lost princes, well, it's hopeless. That's what it is, just hopeless. I'll get blamed for it, and they'll come out wrong, too. See if I don't. Word gets around. Don't trust the squirrel, they'll say. You always go wrong if you follow the squirrel's directions. They never stop to think about the difficulties involved in a job like mine. No, oh, no. They don't stop to think about to thank you either. Not them. Ask the squirrel and go running off. That's what they do. Never so much as a look back. No consideration, no gratitude. You think they'd been raised in a palace for all the manners they have. If they're princes, they probably have been raised in palaces, Menembar said. Princes usually are. Well, no wonder they haven't any manners. Then, the squirrel sniffed, they ought to be sent to school in a forest where people are polite. You don't see any of my children behaving like that? No, sir, please, and thank you, and yes, sir, and no, ma'am. That's how I brought them up, all 23 of them, and that's good enough for squirrels, so should be good enough for princes, I say. Oh, I'm sure you're right, 
Menembar said. Now, about that burn spot. Wicked, that's what I call it, the squirrel interrupted. But hooligans like that don't stop to think, do they? Well, if they did, they wouldn't go around setting things on fire and making a lot of trouble and inconvenience for people. Inconsiderate. Every last one. And they'll be sorry for it one day. You just wait and see. Hooligans? Mandibar blinked and began to feel more cheerful. Maybe he wasn't in trouble with the dragons after all. Maybe it was a rogue who had burned that part of the forest. That would be bad, but at least he wouldn't have to figure out a way of dragon-proofing the entire kingdom. He frowned. How am I going to find out for sure? He wondered aloud. Ask Morwen, said the squirrel, flicking her tail. What? I said, ask Morwen. Honestly, don't you big people ever know how to listen? You'd think none of you had ever talked to a squirrel before, most the way most of you behave. I'm very sorry, Mendenbar said. Who's Morwen? We know who Morwen is. That's much better, the squirrel said, mollified. Morwen's a witch. She lives over by the mountains. Just head that way until you get to a stream, then follow it to a big oak tree with the purple leaves. Turn left and walk for ten minutes, and you should come out in her backyard. That is, you should, if all this burning things and moving things around hasn't tangled everything up too badly. Mandenbar waved at the ashy clearing a few feet away. Oh, my nose is itchy. I gotta go wash my hands. I said no such thing. Morwen is very respectable. Even if she does keep cats. Well, then I don't understand why you think I should talk to her. Mendenbar said, confused. You asked for my advice and I've given it said the squirrel. That's my job. I'm not supposed to explain it, too, for heaven's sake. If you want explanations, talk to a griffin. If I see one, I will. Thank you for your advice. You're welcome, said the squirrel, sounding pleased. She flicked her tail twice and leaped to a higher branch. Goodbye. In another moment, she had disappeared behind a trunk. Goodbye, Mendenbar called after her. He waited, but there was no further response. The squirrel had gone. Slowly, Mandenbar started walking in the direction of the, that the squirrel had pointed. When someone in the Enchanted Forest gave you advice, you were usually best off following it, even if you were the king. Especially if you're the king, Mandenbar reminded himself. He wished he knew a little more about this Morwen person, though. He wasn't really surprised that he hadn't heard of her. So many witches lived in and around the Enchanted Forest that it was impossible for anyone to keep track of all of them. Still, this one must be something special, or the squirrel wouldn't have sent the king of the enchanted forest to her. What sort of witch was Morwen? Respectable didn't really tell him that, Lamach. Especially coming from a squirrel. Morwen could be a white witch, but she could also be the sort of witch who lived in a house made of cookies in order to enhance passing children. She could even be a fire witch, he said to himself. There are probably one or two of them that could be termed respectable. He thought about it for a moment. He'd never heard of any himself. If Morwen had lived in the Enchanted Forest for a long time, she was probably the decent sort of witch. He decided at last. The nasty ones generally made trouble before they'd been around very long, and then someone would complain to the king. And nobody's complained about Morwen, he finished. So, we're going to leave off there. Into And then when we come back, we'll find out what Morrowind can maybe help Mendenbar with. So go ahead and think about some of the information we learned. And I want to have predictions from all of you about who you think might have burnt or ruined part of the forest. Until next time. Bye, guys.